Hello to you beautiful people and welcome back to the Galactic Armory. Today we're going to be stepping out of the Clone Wars and into the Old Republic Age. We're going to be covering the Havoc Trooper, which is basically the Old Republic version of the Clone Trooper, but it's got its own unique looking helmet, and really this helmet would make a great addition to anybody's collection. If you guys remember those awesome cinematic trailers that they released for uh, Knights of the Old Republic, the Havoc Trooper is featured in a couple of those. Let's take a look at one of my favorite scenes. For those that remain, there is but one choice. We must fight to victory or death for the Republic! <laughs> If, if that just doesn't give you the chills every time you watch it, I don't know what's wrong with you. But I love those cinematic trailers to death. So being able to create one of those troopers helmets from basically nothing is going to be a lot of fun. Now we're going to be starting with some 3D printed parts. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, I also sell the parts we're going to start with in my shop online. So if you want to complete this project but don't have access to a 3D printer, be sure and check out that link in the description. Now this helmet is also being printed from files of my own also available on my shop online. I'll link those in the description as well. With all that said, let's get right into the build. So the first step, we're gonna have to 3D print all these parts. Now I printed this helmet with PLA from Xyltech. Now you guys have heard me talk about Xyltech before. I think they're a great filament supplier option and you can use code Galactic Armory at checkout for 15% off your filament order. So if you're looking for a filament supplier, I highly recommend those guys. Once we have all the parts printed out, we're gonna to need to assemble the thing. So for assembly, we're gonna need a few things. First, we're obviously gonna need the 3D printed parts minus the visor, so be sure to have those handy. We've got a pad of 150 grit sandpaper glued down to a flat wooden surface. We've got some cyano acrylate super glue, some E6000, and I've got a soldering iron, but it's not really necessary. Now, the first thing we wanna do is sand the edges of all the parts of the helmet on our sandpaper pad. This is gonna make sure that the pieces fit together very smoothly and very flush so that we minimize the gap in between the pieces. So just take each edge and do about 10 to 15 seconds of sanding. Once you've got all the pieces sanded, we're gonna start assembly. Now here's where I use my soldering iron. I take the hot end of it and I can actually weld the parts together on the inside. Since it's so hot, it'll melt the plastic together, kind of like welding it so that it stays in place. Now, like I said, that's not necessary. You can go straight to using your cyano acrylate super glue. Just add a drop of the stuff around the edge of the helmet every inch or so. The important part here is that you keep your helmet aligned perfectly. If the helmet shifts while the glue is drying, you wanna fix it as quickly as possible because if the helmet's not perfectly flush, it's gonna make a lot of work for us down the line. So being very careful at this point is gonna save us a lot of effort in the future. So the cyano acrylate super glue is pretty fast acting, so it should hold the helmet in place pretty well, but we're also gonna take our E6000, which is a slower acting glue, but is very, very strong. We're gonna apply that stuff along the seam on the inside of the helmet, just really glob it on there. It takes about 24 hours to fully cure, so that's why we're doing it in conjunction with the fast acting CA glue. Now that the helmet is starting to take shape, we're gonna to need to start preparing it for painting. So for this step, we're gonna need a few things. First, you're gonna need some gloves, an aerator, and an open space that's pretty well ventilated. Now the product we're gonna be using to smooth out the helmet is called Bondo Glazing and Spot Putty. It just comes in a tube and you can find it in the automotive section of most large retail stores. What this is gonna do for us is it's gonna fill in the 3D printer lines so that we can make our helmet nice and smooth so that when we go to paint it, it looks perfect. An unfortunate side effect of 3D printing is that you're gonna have layer lines. And those layer lines can be larger or smaller depending on your print settings, but you're gonna have to fill in those lines anyway to make your helmet look nice. Now this Bondo stuff comes out like a red toothpaste and after a few hours, it's actually gonna harden into something that we can sand. Now we're just rubbing it all over the helmet with our finger, making sure to wear a glove for this. And after it's dried and hardened, we'll take our sandpaper to it, and what's left should be a smoother surface than what we started with. Now we'll probably use an entire tube of Bondo for a single helmet, but that's not a big deal. They are The tubes are pretty cheap. I got this one for about $3. You wanna be a little careful when applying Bondo to some of the highly detailed areas. You don't wanna accidentally put some Bondo in a hole or something because it can be tricky to get out or sand out once it's in there. But on the other hand, you also want to apply a lot of Bondo along the seams of the helmet so that when we go to sand it, you can't even tell that the seam line is there. Once you've covered the entire helmet in Bondo, I usually let it sit overnight 
for the Bondo to fully cure before we can start sanding. Now sanding is kind of a beast of a step, it takes a lot of effort, so we're going to try and make that as painless as possible. For that we're going to be starting sanding with a mouse sander. It's just a little orbital handheld sander with a pad that vibrates a lot. On the mouse we're going to have a 120 grit pad of sandpaper to sand away a good amount of the excess Bondo. Now you could go straight to hand sanding no problem, this is just kind of a quick and easy tool to get 80% of the Bondo off with like 20% of the effort. Once we're done with the mouse, we'll follow up with hand sanding and a small little splotch of sandpaper to get in all the details that we missed the first time. Now if you look at my shorts, you can tell that they are getting very, very dirty with lots of dust, so be sure and do this outside and be sure and wear your respirator. You really don't want to be breathing this stuff in. So now we're going to follow it up with hand sanding. Again, we're going to grab a little square of 120 grit sandpaper and just get in all the details that we missed with the mouse. Now there's not a whole lot to say about this step, so I just wanted to take a little time and fill you guys in on some news. So if you didn't see it in the last video, I actually recently quit my job as a software developer to do this kind of work full time. Now it's really kind of scary being out on your own, but I'm loving it so far. I'm hoping that this will mean I can provide you guys a lot more quality content in the future, make a lot more helmet tutorials, make a lot of other videos that you guys might find valuable. So I hope you're looking forward to that. With this decision, I also decided to open up my own Patreon account. Now, if you guys have watched my videos in the past or learned anything from them, and you want to support me on there, it would be absolutely incredible. It would help me continue to do this full time. And you also get some pretty cool stuff out of it. There's a few different tiers, but with most of them, you get free helmet downloads and even discount codes. You guys' support means the world to me. I really wouldn't be able to do this kind of stuff without you guys. I don't want you guys to feel pressure that you have to support me on Patreon but I just wanted to put it out there for those people that do. Thank you for listening to my little spiel. Let's get back to the helmet. So now our helmet is definitely smoother, but it's still not quite ready for painting. The next product we're gonna use is called Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 Filler Primer. The stuff acts like a very thick spray paint and is also going to help fill in some of those 3D printer lines, but since it's an aerosol, it's gonna be a lot easier to work into some of those highly detailed areas. Now you want to be pretty generous with this stuff. I usually do two to three coats with it, waiting about 20 minutes in between each coat. And we're going to cover the entire helmet with the stuff. Let it dry for a bit, and then we're going to get back to sanding. Now for this sanding step, we're still going to be using a 120 grit sandpaper, but this time we're going around the entire helmet, and now we're looking for like small areas that still need a little bit of work. Most likely there'll be spots around the helmet that are a little bit light on Bondo, but you can still see the layer lines. You want to identify those at this step, because we're going to be doing the last two steps again. This process might take several iterations, but you can go through it as many times as you like. So you can either do it once more, no more times more, or as many times as you like until you've got the finish that you're happy with. Now that we've identified our rough spots, we're going to apply a little bit more Bondo. In this case, some of the detailed areas needed a bit more work. So instead of covering it with filler primer, like doing six coats of it, I grabbed a little cotton swab and applied the Bondo that way so that I could get into those high precision areas without really messing things up. Let all the Bondo cure, and then we're back to sanding again. Now we're still using our original 120 grit pad of sandpaper, but it's a little bit worn down, so it's not quite as rough as earlier. So when we're done sanding here, it should be a little bit smoother. Feel free to go over the entire helmet sanding it down, making sure to look for even more trouble spots that you might have missed the first time. And then once we're done, we're gonna get back to our filler primer to prepare it for the final round of sanding. So before we start our final round of sanding, I like to go over the entire helmet and do one more round of the filler primer just to give ourselves a good base. Now I want to prepare you guys. What you're about to see is pretty graphic, so brace yourselves. Now this filler primer is a little bit slippery and paired with the gloves, it can present some difficulties holding these pieces. So if you've got a weak stomach, just look away. That's right, I dropped the visor and one of the entire arms just snapped right off. Now this is obviously a setback, but it lets me show you guys the fix that I used in case something similar like this happens to you. So let's finish up the filler primer and let's fix this thing. So we got a broken visor. Fortunately, there are plenty of ways that we can fix this. Now the first thing I noticed was those little, see those little holes? That's actually the infill. Now the infill for this visor goes along the same way that this thing broke. So my thinking was 
Maybe we can put some reinforcing rods in that infill, just kind of shove it up in there in both parts. That way it wouldn't be prone to snapping again. Now for that, I used a two-part epoxy putty. Now this putty starts off as being like Play-Doh, but after like five working minutes, it gets very hard and very strong. We're also gonna be using this later on in the build. I'm also gonna be applying some E6000 along the seam just to make sure that the putty stays in place and for a strong hold. And then we're gonna apply some of our cyanoacrylate super glue along the outside just to make sure that the outside stays together as well. We're gonna clamp the whole thing down and wait 24 hours for the E6000 to cure. So it's been 24 hours. We are now ready to remove these clamps and see if what we did worked. Now it felt pretty strong to me. I just gave it a little bit of a wiggle, see if it moved around or snapped off, but it didn't, so that's good news. But unfortunately, we created a new seam, so we're gonna have to apply some Bondo to that just to hide it. You guys know what Bondo does by now, so we'll let this cure and then we'll sand it down. So we sanded it down and check it out. You can barely tell that it's there, and when we paint over it, you're not even gonna be able to tell it was there. So now we're gonna get back to our final round of sanding across the entire helmet. For that, we're gonna be using a higher grit sandpaper so that the finish on the helmet is a lot smoother. We're gonna be using a 220 grit sandpaper pad across the entire helmet. That's as high as I went for this helmet. It doesn't need to be, you know, extraordinarily high grit sandpaper. If you guys want, you can go higher, but I only went with 220. Now that we've got the helmet sanded over, it should feel really smooth. We can finally start painting. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is apply a base coat. For that base coat, we're gonna be using a Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte White. Be sure and do this in light coats so that we don't get any runs. This took me about two to three coats to get the helmet entirely covered in white so that we can move on to our other colors. Now, originally I taped over this entire helmet and spray painted it with a glossy dark gray. I really didn't like how it turned out. So instead we're just gonna be using a plain old paintbrush and mixing the gray ourselves. And I wanted the gray to be a little bit lighter and not glossy. So we're just gonna be mixing some black and white acrylic paint and using a paintbrush to paint over the glossy dark gray. Using a paintbrush also gives us some better control over where the paint goes. Some of the tape lines didn't work out quite as well. I think the tape lifted up a little bit. So remember that just doing it the old fashioned way is always an option as well. I did about three coats of paint on the light gray just to make sure that you, know, you couldn't see any of the brush strokes or any of the dark gray underneath. Next, we're gonna to need to prepare for the orange color. And for that, we are gonna be using spray paint. So we're gonna to have to tape the helmet up again. So we've got the helmet taped up in preparation for the orange. I wanna do one quick thing first though. We're gonna be using a product called Liquid Latex to give our helmet a bit of weathering. What this latex will do is we'll paint it on, let it dry, and then when we paint over the latex with the orange paint, we'll be able to rub the latex off with our finger, giving a really cool chipped paint effect on the helmet. For the orange, we're gonna be using a Rust-Oleum Satin Rustic Orange. This is actually the same orange that we used in the Captain Vaughn video a while back. We're gonna do light coats on this, making sure that we don't get any stray paint particles on the white that we don't want, and then we'll cover the entire visor with this color. Now we get to have some fun and remove the tape, which is always really satisfying, because now we get to plainly see the helmet underneath with all of its colors. And if we take a close look, you can watch me peel off the liquid latex, and you'll see what I mean about the chipped paint effect it gives us. I really like how it turned out. So now we're gonna add a little bit of weathering effect to our helmet just to make it look more realistic, more worn, and make it look like it's actually seen some battle. The first step to this is we're gonna do a black wash. So I've got some black acrylic paint, a little bit of water in a cup, and then a sponge brush. We're gonna mix the paint in with a little bit of water and then paint that slurry over the helmet. Then we'll use a paper towel to dry off the paint, leaving a little bit of residue behind, giving the helmet a darker shade. Now what I also did here that I ended up really liking is grabbing a paintbrush and dipping it in the black paint. Now instead of just painting on the helmet, I really thinned it out by painting on some cardboard just to get a lot of the paint off. And then I like creased the edges of the helmet with this paintbrush. It really gives it some good detail when there's, when there's a little bit of darker colors in the hard creases of the helmet. Since that's where dirt and grime would naturally accumulate, it makes it look a lot more realistic. And I really liked how it turned out. I'll probably do this technique again in the future. And we're gonna do the same thing with the visor, giving it a black wash, and then following it up with the paintbrush in the deep creases. So now we're gonna add our eyepiece visor to really bring the helmet together. Now for the visor, we're gonna be using a grinding shield mask. These are a little difficult to find right now, but if you guys look around, I'm sure you can find some. You might have to tint it a different color, but they are out there. Now we're gonna use a piece of paper to trace the outline of the visor shape that we need, since we need to cut it down for it to properly fit inside the helmet. Once you've got that, we're gonna cut out our visor in the shape that we just traced, and then we're gonna use our two-part epoxy putty that we talked about earlier. Now this stuff starts out soft, but then it's gonna harden 
and it's really going to hold that visor in place really well. So here I mix up about four globs of putty and apply it to the four corners of the visor that I think need to be held down the most. I have to hold it down for about five minutes. After that, the putty should be hard enough that you can release it and let the putty finish hardening itself. There you go, guys. That is all you need to know to complete your own Havoc Trooper helmet. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something, and I hope that you're feeling confident enough to take a project like this on yourself. I do want to show you guys some quick artwork. This one actually comes from my sister. She painted this for me for my birthday. It is the Galactic Armory logo. I think she did an amazing job. I absolutely love it, and I'm going to keep it next to my desk. Remember, I do love seeing you guys' finished helmets and artwork, so feel free to send them to me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you again in the next one.